Welcome to this week's episode of Humans in Five. Next week, we reach one of my favorite holidays of the year, Halloween. Sure, it's not a real holiday, but I absolutely loved getting dressed up while sharing my costumes with my friends and we would trick or treat around the neighborhood. I didn't necessarily grow up with Halloween, but it certainly grew on me. Aside from the fun of getting dressed up, there's an atmosphere on Halloween that can be really tough to beat. There's a lot of myths and stories about where Halloween comes from. So today, we'd like to break down the history of this spooky day. Any chat about Halloween typically centers around Samhain. Samhain is a holiday in the medieval Gaelic calendar and takes place on the 31st of October and the 1st of November in Ireland and Scotland. There are similar holidays that also take place in other regions with Gaelic roots. The holiday began at sunset and from the night of the 31st to the 1st, Samhain marked the end of the harvest and the beginning of winter. As this date marked a boundary between summer and winter, people believed that the veil between the physical world and the supernatural world was thinner than usual. Spirits or fairies, which were believed to be remnants of the old gods that preceded Christianity, were thought to be more active and would cross over at this seasonal boundary. These spirits were both respected and feared, and Gaelic peoples believed that the spirits needed to be appeased to ensure the survival of one's crops and livestock in the harsh months to come. The veil between the living and the dead was also believed to be thinner than usual during Samhain. People believed that the souls of the dead might visit their homes and would set out an extra place at the table to make sure the dead felt welcome. People also played games and divined their futures, as rituals were thought to be stronger at this transitional time. To cap off the festivities from the 16th century onwards, people would also get dressed up in costumes and visit houses reciting poetry in exchange for food. People would impersonate the souls of the dead and therefore protect themselves as th at this spiritually sensitive time of year. As Christianity expanded in Gaelic regions in subsequent years, a lot of these traditions merged with Christian practices. Samhain fell at the same time of year as the Christian tradition of All Hallows or All Saints Day, where they also commemorated the dead. Services and festivities focus on remembering the saints as well as those recently departed and on their way to heaven. There are several other similarities between these Christian and pagan holidays. Christians would also dress up as they remember the saints and people would go door to door exchanging prayers for cakes. As both traditions related to transitions and death, Potentially, as they were both at the start of winter and plants and crops were beginning to die, these holidays became intertwined. Many of these traditions waned in some parts of the UK, particularly with the rising prominence of other celebrations, like Guy Fawkes Day on November the 5th. However, in some regions of Scotland and Ireland, these traditions flourished with immigrant communities, keeping them alive as they settled in North America. Similar to St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo, the adoption of Samhain and All Hallows traditions in North America became commercialized and separated from both their pagan and Christian roots. Now most people see it as a fun time to party and get their costume on. We certainly enjoy all manners of tricks and treats, and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. Don't forget to subscribe.